All right, cutting board handles, hand holds. Uh, cutting boards are a great project. A lot of woodworkers, we love them. Great way to use scraps, uh, hardwoods. The thing with them is they get pretty dense. They get pretty heavy. And if it's just sitting on a counter, how do you lift it up? Now, some will add the feet on the bottom. I prefer to, uh, to add the handles. Uh, that way you can actually use both sides of the board. So if someone wants to use one side for cutting, you can flip it over, get your charcuterie on. Um, I just think it's a classy, classy addition to a cutting board. So just using three simple router bits, uh, we've got a round nose bit, we've got a cove bit, and then a chamfer bit. I uh, can get those profiles, or you can just go to the table saw and just get a really heavy chamfer uh, for some handles. So anyway, cutting board handholds, check it out. All right, so for this project, you're gonna need the router table. Uh, this is just my DIY, like 30 bucks to make router table. Uh, it's super basic, but it's fantastic. I really love it. It works for me. Uh, more information about this one uh, is in the description. All right, so stop blocks is the name of the game here. So you can just use any scrap wood and just some you know quick grip clamps, uh, get it in there. You're just gonna need some kind of stop block. Personally, I prefer, prefer using these wooden screw clamps. Uh, they just work fantastic. Uh, so you just gotta get your fence set up. Uh, this first one, uh, you need that round nose bit to get in the middle of the board. So you're gonna have to adjust it based on the depth of your board, uh, but get it just so, and then uh, add your stops. So uh, just kind of eyeball where you want it, how wide you want that groove to be, and then uh, you're ready to go. So yeah, this is a 3 8 inch round nose bit. Uh, I use this for juice grooves, but uh, it adds a nice little, little handle on the end. Um, so you just want to go nice and easy, uh, work your way in. Uh, it's a little tricky. Uh, it's, you know, a tall board up against that fence. So go nice and easy. Start uh, with re really shallow depth to make sure it's where you want it to be. And then just work your way up, you know, probably two or three, you know, incremental uh, raises of the, uh, the router bit. And uh, you can just kind of check it out at whatever aesthetic you're going for and, you know, finger grip. Um, you know depth so it looks pretty sweet um, it's it's nice it's on the inside and this way you can use both sides of the board rather easily and um, you know it's it's a it's a good good solution so test it out get a feel for it all right you don't have to have a router uh, or a router table to do it you could just go to the table saw and do some bevel action so this is just a 45 degree bevel and you're just you know get a nice heavy chamfer on the bottom of your board uh, when you rotate it on the other end you're just gonna have to mess around with with uh with it a little bit uh kind of sneak up on it do those incremental like maybe you know a 16th a 32nd just to get it right where uh those bevels meet but it's pretty cool um it's just it's a good look you can get a, a light chamfer on the top over the router table but that's totally an option all right cove bit is my favorite i've been using this for a couple of years so it's got the bearing on the top so you actually don't need the fence uh, you don't need it to ride the fence but you can but again, you're using the stops of those uh, clamps. And so it's just, um, you're riding the cove bit, working your way up, uh, slowly raise that bit, uh, just to take away a little bit at a time. And um, you know, you're gonna get a nice little handle. So again, like with the other one, just double check to make sure it's it's where you want it to be, if it's symmetrical, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's pretty straightforward and um, you got a nice little grip there, so. Yeah, it's got an, a lovely little curve there and um, it's a fun one. So play around with that, it's a good option. All right, so last but not least is the chamfer bit. Um, if you're gonna use the chamfer, um, I would go with a bigger bit than this uh, just to, to really get the fingers to fit. That's the same idea as the cove bit uh, that we just saw. Uh, you're just, you know, riding it. It's just gonna look a little bit different, a little bit more straight lines, a little bit more of a modern look. But you can see it doesn't go as deep uh, with this small, you know, generic uh, chamfer bit. But it's still a great look and a great option. All right, before you exit out, uh, stay tuned. I've got a pretty big video coming out soon. It's like cutting board 101. Uh, going through all the all the steps, all the tips, tricks that I've used uh, to make a ton of different cutting boards. Uh, both face grain, uh, edge grain like these, uh, or some end grain boards. 
Um, but stay tuned for the end if you want to see some pictures, kind of get a, get a feel for, for the boards we make. But it really does help. So if you're new to cutting boards, it's going to give you everything you need. And if you've already made quite a few, there, there will be some tips and some ideas, uh, maybe some inspiration for you as well. Uh, but if you enjoyed this, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, catch that next video uh, coming out shortly. Uh, or go ahead and jump on over to my Instagram. Uh, check out the, the link in the, the description uh, to see uh, all of our SADA shenanigans and, and really what we're up to with the working of wood. So appreciate it. Take care.